Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Smug Mill tries to kidnap my son, calls 911 when I kick her out of my house. Summary. The story of my life with a mother-in-law that always hated me. She started with always judging me and my looks, and she advanced to smoking and drinking in front of my child. She called the police on me, and said that I attacked her. She always said that I was not a good wife and not a good mother and not a good woman in general. We forgave her thousands of times, but the thing she did that we couldn't forget was, kidnapping our son. We were lucky that the police chased her and caught her, we got our son back, she was arrested and we never saw her again. This story is about my mother-in-law, and her relationship with me and her son. From the moment she saw me, she hated me. She tried everything to convince my husband not to marry me. Her plan was not successful, we got married and we have a son together. She has been annoying me since I can remember. The first time she ever saw me she told me that I'm fat, even though I'm not. She always tried putting me down, talking bad about me and my body, and always telling me how bad I look. To be honest, I never really cared, I love my husband and he loves me, so we just laugh it off. The real problems begin when I give birth to our child. She started telling me that I'm not a good mother and that I don't know how to raise my child. One time, a month after the birth, she called my husband. Darling. Keep an eye on the baby because I'm sure that stupid woman doesn't know how to care for a child. Do you want me to come over? They fought there, my husband told me that he doesn't want to take her shit anymore and that she should stop. They fought for 10 minutes on the phone, and the conversation ended with my husband saying. Don't talk to us again. We didn't talk to her for 5 months, before she started calling again, apologizing, and sending gifts to the house. I'm sorry that I upset you, darling. Mom, why don't you want to understand? She is my wife, the mother of my child, you can't act like that. She never said or did anything to you. She stole you from me. When you were a little boy, about four years old, you promised me that you'll never leave me for another woman, said his mother and started crying. That's crazy. I was four, mom, he replied shouting. You were four and you were so smart. Since you meet her, you started being dumb and disrespectful. There is nothing she has that I can't give you. There's plenty, I replied. She started crying suddenly and lay on the couch, pretending she needed water. I went to grab water but I listened to the conversation a little more. Dear, you can leave her, let her take the kid with her. You move in back with me, and we'll be happy again, she said. I heard my husband shouting again so I went and brought the water. She drank the water and didn't say anything for almost half an hour. I regret everything I said, she finally broke the silence. I didn't say anything. All I wanted to do was kick her out of the house. I looked at her, she was fake crying, looking at my husband with puppy eyes. You can make it up by staying with the child tomorrow, we have some work to do in the garden, he said. I'd love to. I'm so happy, she replied. I wasn't happy with this idea, but I wanted to let my husband be happy, and keep his relationship with his mother. The next day, she came to our house at 9am and took a seat next to the kids on the couch. We're in the garden. Shout if you need anything, said my husband. We won't need anything, I know how to take care of a child, she replied. We went outside and started our work. We heard the kid laughing a few times, so we assumed that everything was fine. We finished in the garden around the afternoon, and we went inside to eat something. As we entered the room we saw that it was full of smoke, she was smoking and drinking next to our child. What the hell are you doing? Asked my husband. Nothing, I'm just smoking a cigarette, watching TV, she replied. He grabbed the wine bottle from her hand and smashed it on the floor. You can't come in here and act like you own everything. You can't drink and smoke in front of our child, he shouted, get out. She didn't reply, she just walked out of the door, with the cigarette still in her hand. I took the child, changed his clothes, because it was stinking of smoke, and put him to sleep. As we were talking about what happened, someone knocked on the door, the police. Good evening, sir. That lady called us, and she said that your wife attacked her. My husband explained the whole situation and the police officer left. I spent the night trying to calm my husband and tried think about how we could handle the situation. 
It didn't take much until she started calling him again, apologizing and begging him to forgive her, and he did. Can I come over tomorrow? She asked. I'm not home tomorrow, but you could come, he replied and looked at me. I wanted to grab the phone from his hand and screamed at his mother, but I just nodded. I wanted to make her realize I was not a bad wife and mother. She came in the morning, so I prepared her coffee and some biscuits. I don't really like coffee. Did you do it or was it bought? She asked, so I decided to lie. It's bought, I don't know how to make coffee. You know, when I first saw you, I knew you were not good for him. You're not pretty, you're fat and you don't even know how to make coffee, she said smiling, also, should have known you didn't do this coffee, you could never, she added while taking another sip. Thank you for all the compliments. Also, I made the coffee, I was just testing to see how big of a hypocrite you are. I get off my chair and walk slowly to the front door, I open it and I look at my mother-in-law. Get out, I said. Before she left the house, she made sure to throw all the coffee she had left on the carpet, and then she left. I called my husband and told him everything. I don't want to have her in this house anymore. I don't want her near my kid, I said. I'll talk to her, and we'll give her one last chance, the last one. He called her and explained what she did wrong, he told her that she can't drink and smoke in our house and that she can't disrespect me and put our kid in danger. Look, I know you are stressed dear, go out for dinner. I can stay with the kid tomorrow night, go out for an hour, she said. That's a very good idea mom. Thanks. I hated the plan, but I wanted to go out, and I knew that we'll fight with her and that it will be the last. She laughed at my dress, but I didn't listen to her, and we went to the restaurant closest to our home. I think we better go home, I said after only half an hour. But we only drank a glass of wine. I don't trust your mother, I replied. We got in the car and drove home. When we parked, we saw her and the child, both in her car. I jumped out of the car and ran to her. Give me my child, I shouted. She rolled her window a little and smiled. You are not worthy of it. You can't take care of your child. If you want this kid to be safe, divorce my son. What? Why? I asked, almost crying. We would take care of him, me and him, and I promise you, the child will never be in danger. My husband called the police and then started fighting with his mother, who still wouldn't open the door. When the police finally came, she started the car and left, but the police chased her. I was standing in front of my house, listening to the police siren, hoping that my son would be fine. A few minutes later, the police came with the child. We arrested the lady, said the police officer who gave me the kid. That was the last time we spoke to her, never heard another word, never saw her again. It's been years since the incident, but to be honest, I still don't want to see her. The next story is titled. Bedroom Surprise. TL. Drive. Stranger barged into my bedroom after I showered looking for my in-law neighbor. This happened 11 years ago but I still remember it, and feel, as if it happened last week. I am using real names here as my in-laws know this woman and I have told the story before. They have known this woman longer than I have known what she was like so they will not be surprised or offended. The story below is the first meeting we ever had. I am sorry this is long, but I hope it entertains you. Important background info. I am deaf and just had my first kid who was less than a year old. I had trouble hearing her cry so I was glued to the baby monitor day and night. Our home arrangement at the time was this. Main bedroom, living room, office was in a converted garage. The garage door was changed to a large picture window with lace curtains and drapes. During the day we would open the drapes to let the light in. The front door to the house was right next to the window and guests would peer in the window. We had a doorbell but it broke but with hearing aids I can hear a knock or see people walk up the driveway before they reach the door. Our home is like a townhouse added onto the side of an already built small single-story home which was occupied by my grandmother-in-law, Gil, Nora. I married into a multi-generational Italian, Australian family. Nora was very active in the Italian community here, so she went out a lot and had people drop by all the time to visit her. My in-laws knew these people, I didn't really. A lot of the time if Nora wasn't home and her potential visitors would knock on our door and ask where she was all the time. We were annoyed by it, we had no idea where she is, was. We were not her keeper. Additionally on our side of the house my husband's parents live with us. Like I said, multi-generational. My Phil and Mill are wonderful. The story. I was alone with my daughter and took the opportunity to get a quick shower while she napped. 
She was asleep in a baby carrier on the bed so I could see her from the ensuite shower, and the monitor was in view too. I was ducking my head out of the curtain every few moments to check. No problems. When my shower was done I wrapped myself in a towel and walked into the bedroom from the ensuite. I shrieked, there was a strange woman in her 80s in my house and in my bedroom. I was shocked to say the least. Me. Who are you? Lucille. Lucille. Your door was unlocked and I'm looking for Nora. Do you know where she is? Me. No get out. I said as I grasped the towel tighter around myself. It was a bit loose when I entered my bedroom before spotting her. Lucille notices me adjusting the towel. Lucille. It's okay. It's nothing I haven't seen before. I am fuming. Me. Get out. She left and I was shaking. My daughter didn't wake during this. Lucille's voice was loud enough for me to hear her speak without my hearing aids in. I have trouble with my voice volume with them out. I must have been loud too, she left right away. I repeated the story to a few in-laws a while later and they knew who she was. They said that she was known to the family as not being too bright. Since then, I have been hyper-vigilant about locking that door even though the house arrangement has changed since then and Nora died about four years ago. The last story is titled. Entitled Lady Claims She Owns the Road. So I've posted on this subreddit before, and in the past I had posted stories on here about a crazy lady. To be clear this is not that same lady. So, I am a 16-year-old male. I admit I did not handle things well in the last stories and was just so mad thinking back on it that I was not even sure what I was typing. I am more mature now, and I can handle these situations better now having dealt with them before. Anyways, the story begins earlier today, January 8, 2023. When me and my family were riding around the neighborhood on dirt bikes and quads, for context it is legal to ride around this area as it is county land and we were planning to go to the desert so we don't bother anyone. We do live on land but not enough to ride around with my family considering we are on about an acre and a half with horses. So, we decide to go off around the neighborhood. My sister who is 8 just got a dirt bike for Christmas and is having a blast on it. It's not anything big, Honda CRF 80F, considering she is 8 and she just started on an actual bike. We were going about 15 to 20 since my sister wanted to be able to keep up with us in second gear since she feels she is not ready for third gear yet. The bike is a semi-auto 3 speed. So I was at my house at the time and my mom calls me, she says that the ATV my grandma and step grandpa were riding had stalled. So I hop on my quad to go save the day. They were parked on the side of a long stretch of dirt road not too far from our house. I look at the ATV for a minute and the gas was flipped off. As soon as I figure that out, the entitled lady comes out of her house. Are you guys aware this is a residential area? She says. My uncle says, yeah we live just down the road. She then starts to say, you guys are well aware this is illegal racing these things around here then? My mom starts to talk, ma'am, we have lived here long enough to know this is in fact not illegal since it is county land, and we are on a dirt road, in case you haven't noticed plenty of people do this all the time, she then gets cut off. The entitled lady yells to her friend who had just randomly appeared, did you get pictures of them? Which her friend responds with, yep, nothing was on and they were about 10 feet away from each other, no need to yell. Now this next bit is pretty long since she just kept cutting us off with the same, stop yelling. She was the only one yelling but my mom was getting a bit irritated and started raising her voice. This lady then goes on to how she owns the road. Yes the road that leads to the main road, the most populated road for people living in this neighborhood, she claimed she owned. I tell my grandma and grandpa to just go home because it's a waste of time, and they had dinner in the oven. This lady starts swearing at us I just start ignoring her and try to get the ATV started. I had let my grandma and grandpa ride my quad home they somehow figured out how to fit both of themselves on their law. So anyways, she does not like that, then yells how I'm being disrespectful, I admit it was a little disrespectful but she was just spewing out the same nonsense on how she owned the road, and how it was illegal to ride motorized vehicles here. So I stopped trying to start it to try to pump some gas in it, since the ATV was pretty much starved of fuel for a good mile. She then goes on how someone was racing, and comes to the conclusion it was us. Ah yes, because a family with an 8-year-old on a 70cc dirt bike would be racing up and down the road. I knew who she was talking about though, because some kids who were notorious for causing problems had been flying down the road on two strokes and I had saw them on the way to save my grandma and grandpa. Like, 
the dirt bikes we have and the two strokes sound significantly different, since everything we were riding at the time was four stroke. But she still pinned the blame on us. Eventually I just signal my family to follow me because I started the ATV and the lady continues to yell at us about how disrespectful we are for leaving. Honestly I don't even care that I was disrespectful because we were sitting there listening to her for a good 15 minutes. And we all got tired of waiting. So now I'm sitting at home while me and my family laugh about this and as I type this story. Clarification. Me and my uncle were keeping it in low RPM since his bike and my quad do have an exhaust system on them. My quad, Honda 400X, had an exhaust on it when we got it, it's not the loudest thing ever but I am mindful to keep it down since I know it can get loud. Also something I should clear up is that my 125 that has an exhaust on it is not that loud, it has a resonator and the 125 itself is not a loud bike, although I still do keep it down around the neighborhood. Thank you for reading, and have a good day, night.